Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'm making this lovely display tray which is quite a good one if you're a beginner with resin because you can't really go wrong. It's the, the resin part of it is really simple. I've kept that simple because the detail is in the handles and the abalone shell in the centre and also the edging which is a different technique that I haven't tried out before so I'm trying out an idea for the edges and as you can see they did turn out really pretty so that's what today's video will be making the tray and a new way of colouring the edges so I hope you enjoy <laughs> Because I'm keeping the resin very simple in this tray, I wanted to have detail on the edges, in the middle and on the handles and not so much in the resin. So I decided to decorate the edges in a way that I haven't done before. It was a bit of an experiment. I've seen people applying mica powders directly to the edges of the moulds rather than painting them after demoulding. And I do like that idea, but I also had the idea that it'd be good to use gilding flakes. So I have this, these Cosmic Shimmer gilding flakes, which are really beautiful. There's all different shades in there. And I'm, I applied them directly to the edge of the mould and brushed them on. And it did, I'm not going to lie, it, it took a lot of time. It really did take ages to put all those gilding flakes on because you have to kind of do it one by one. Otherwise, if you pour them onto the mould, they'll stick everywhere and you'll be wasting your gilding flakes. So I just added them to the silicon. You don't need to put glue or anything on there because it the properties of the silicon cause the... Th the things like gilding flakes and mica powders to just naturally cling to it by themselves so you don't need to add anything. Once I'd finished adding my gilding flakes I just got some copper pigment powder just to fill in the gaps and I'm just brushing it on with a soft brush so that there's no gaps where there's just empty silicon. Because I'm using black I didn't want to see black on the sides so I'm just making sure I've filled in all those bits on the edges. Now, as I said, this is time consuming, but it really was worth it in the end. The finished result I found was just really, really pretty. And especially with the variation in those gilding flakes, because it wasn't just one solid colour. It was unusual. And I like to have a bit of a change instead of just having those edges where it's gold or silver or any other colour. You've got the, your multicoloured edges and... Yeah, you can get all different variations in the Cosmic Shimmer um, gilding flakes. So you can try out all kinds of different things. It just works so well. And the best thing about this method is once you take your tray out of the mould, it's finished. You don't need to do anything else to it. Because the gilding flakes and the mica powders bond with the resin. And as far as I can tell, and you know, I, I've not done this before but as far as I can tell that won't come off I've tried scratching it and banging it and it seems permanent but you know I can't promise that because it's my first try but it really does seem like those gilding flakes once they're bonded with the resin they won't come off but don't don't hold me to that one <laughs> Maybe someone who's watching might be able to give us some feedback on that. If you've tried this before with the gilding flakes and you know that they don't come off at all, please let us know in the comments because that will be really helpful to me and to everybody else. Now, once that was all on, I just used some multi-purpose household wipes just to clean off the middle of the mould where I, was, I knew there was going to be clear resin in the middle, you see. So I wanted to make sure at least the middle was clean. I didn't go to the trouble of wiping all of that base of the, the mould off. You could, but I didn't, because I thought, well, I know that the 
bottom is going to be the bottom. It's not, there's no option there because I'm putting handles in this while the resin is still wet. So, you know, the, the bottom doesn't need to look fabulous. It just needs to be acceptable. <laughs> so I didn't go into all the fuss of getting rid of all the mica powder because it can be a little bit uh, tricky to get rid of it all. And I'd already spent so much time putting those gilding flakes on, I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so as you can see, I've given it a little bit of a clean up and then it's ready for the resin. Next, I mixed my resin. Uh, well, I weighed my resin first and then mixed it. It's liquidissima resin and it's one that you need to weigh rather than use by volume. And I really can't remember the measurement. I do apologise for that. I'm not sure how much I weighed out for this mould. Anyway, I put some aside. I wanted some clear and some black. And I'm using the Colour Fun Black Pigment Paste from Resin Pro. And I'm just going to apply that around the edges and put some clear in the middle. I kept it nice and simple. I just poured it in because all the detail, as I said before, is in the the edges and the handles and in the centre with the abalone shell. And I knew there was no pressure with this bit to make it fancy or to get any special effects I just poured it in and I allowed time to do what it does the great thing with resin is you leave it and the colours start to merge together so I knew that the black would start to merge with the clear and I, it would be just fine for what I had in mind. Unfortunately, I did forget to level my surface. So as you can see, my clear middle ended up not quite in the middle. So I had to move it around a bit. But then I used my embossing torch and just blended those edges together a little bit and it was fine. And I left it. Once the handles were in, it could be left to do its own thing. Right, so it's time for the handles. All you need to do is place them into the resin and try to get them level so that they're both in the, you know, you know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> Just get try to get them in the right position so that they're perfectly opposite each other and nice and straight. I made these um, handles myself and if you haven't seen the video showing how I made them, please um, feel free to go and watch that. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of the video and you can see how I made the matching handle. For some reason I decided it would be a good idea to add the abalone shell after the resin had had a little while to cure so it had just thickened up a bit. I thought it would be fine but unfortunately it did sink a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, so I would recommend allowing the first layer to cure and then add the abalone shell. Um because that's what I had to do. I had to, once this had sunk, I had to put, a, and it had all cured, I added a new layer and then added more shell. And it was kind of good because you got a really good depth with the shells, but it was quite wasteful, really. So, yeah, we've, I've just cut quite a lot of the video out just to show where we're up to now, where I've just added a final top coat over the abalone shell and then once it's cured, the next day it will be ready to demold. I tried to keep this video simple because sometimes I do go on too much so I've just kept it nice and simple because it's a simple tray, you don't need to do anything fancy so I just kept it short and sweet. And the observant ones watching will have noticed from my reflection that I was very naughty and I forgot to put my mask on. Sometimes I do forget and it's not a good idea. The problem is my glasses steam up as well um, when I'm wearing my mask. So sometimes I'm a little bit naughty and I, I don't. But really, you should always wear your um, mask, definitely. I'm going to get sold off now, I can just tell. But yeah. That's me, I'm honest. Right, it's time for the best bit, 
demolding and I was really excited about this because I really wanted to see how those edges would look because I'd never tried that method before. So let's have a look to see how it turns out. If you're a resin artist and you've done this kind of thing before, you know already that Usually when you're using resin in a mould like this, you'll get a lip around the edge, just r slightly raised at the edges. And what you can do is add, once it's out of the mould, add a top layer of resin. But I've left it because with this tr being um, a display tray, that's, you know, it's not, I wouldn't plan on moving it. But just in case the person who ends up with it wants to pick it up and use it as a normal tray, then I, I thought that lip would just help things to, to not slide off. So I'm leaving the lip there. Although it does need sanding because it was a bit rough in places. So I just use a nail file to just sand the edges really carefully so it's nice and smooth around the edges, but it will still have that raised lip. Once I'd finished sanding, I just used a really soft brush to brush away any dust and it was ready. So now I'll show you some close-ups so you can get a better look at the detail. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and hope I've managed to inspire you a little bit. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so if you've enjoyed the video. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you know next time I upload a video. If you would like to see how I made the handles, click the link above. And I will hope to see you very soon. Bye for now.